In this video, we will be tasting and talking about batch 87 of the Eco Cha Tea Club, a Dongding Tie Guan Yin Oolong Tea. Batch 87 of the Eco Cha Tea Club is a Dongding Tie Guan Yin Oolong Tea. Dongding representing the uh, place name and tradition of Oolong tea making in Lugu. Taiwan, where Dongding Oolong tea uh, comes from, and Tia Guanyin is the name of the tea cultivar or strain of tea plant. Uh, tea Guanyin is also used uh, as a name of tea based on its processing methods in uh, Mu Jat, Taipei, uh, northern Taiwan. So uh, we're just talking about the strain of tea plant when we're talking about Tia Guanyin in this case and uh, Dongding being the tea uh, processing methods uh, to make Dongding Oolong. It's really um, a combination of processing methods in that uh, these leaves were oxidized uh, more than almost anyone in Dongding area would oxidize them, and they were definitely roasted more, like to the tune of 80 plus hours. Uh, heavily roasted tea, but with care and finesse. The leaves uh, haven't been burnt at all. There's still some green hue to them. There's suppleness in them. They're not stiff or wiry, uh, like overly, basically leaves that have been uh, roasted at too high of a temperature will get hard. These aren't. Um, there, there is a certain uh, resilience to them or springiness to them that uh, is partially due to the roasting but also due to their uh, original nature, so to speak. They're, very, uh, they're extraordinarily thick leaves. The stems in the leaves are thick and the leaves themselves, they're just hardy. Uh, this is considered an heirloom strain. Our friend's father planted a crop of this heirloom uh, Tia Guan Yin over 30 years ago as per the request of one of his regular customers. And uh, the son, who is now running things basically, uh, has um, cultivated clippings, basically took clippings to a nursery, had several hundred of these saplings raised and planted uh, one plot, uh, well, basically he's been raising these uh, types of tea trees for several years now. He just planted another plot uh, this year, uh, just last month actually, so there'll be more to come with luck. Um, so uh, he did it because he thinks it's a worthwhile strain of tea to represent. It also gives him a differentiating value. Uh, he has a different type of tea than most, uh, basically all tea growers in his area. And he has been learning how to process these leaves uh, to reach optimal results. We shared a batch of this uh, almost a year ago, uh, a crop from uh, winter 2021. So uh, that batch sat for a few months and then we shared it in early spring of 2022. This batch of tea is spring 2022 and we're just sharing it now. So uh, after the long extensive roasting process that took months, uh, this tea has sat for over six months, just uh, not vacuum sealed, allowed to breathe, allowed to mellow. And with uh, that extensive roasting, the mellowing is an important part. Uh, we tasted it uh, six months ago or more. It tasted really good. It tastes even better now, simply because uh, any of this sharpness or kind of um, just like edgy quality to the roast has mellowed. It's gotten mellower and the flavor profile is more integrated um, and balanced, basically smoother as well. Um, I brewed 12 and a half grams of tea in this 175 milliliter teapot for one minute for the first three brews, then uh, one minute, 15 seconds for brew four and one minute, 30 seconds for brew five. Um, so uh, before we get into tasting, yeah, the leaves are, uh, the dried leaves are chunky. And that's uh, representing their original nature as well. The thick, uh, kind of hearty texture to the fresh produce um, is reflected all the way through to the rolling process. They were rolled not super tightly. 
uh, which allows for more even oxidation and roasting. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice uh, traditional oolong uh, appearance to the dried leaves as well. Okay, uh, all of this tea has been allowed to cool down. Um, let's have the first brew. <clears throat> The first sip always reminds me of a batch of Fosho that we shared a couple years ago with the tea club. Uh, Fosho, meaning Buddha hand, is a traditional style of oolong tea from China uh, that is made with a large leaf uh, type of tea. Most large leaf is made into, if it's not from southwest China where they make puar, it's made into a black tea of one form or another. Um, it's, it's just a, the large leaf type is closer to the original tea trees before they were started, before they started to be cultivated by humans, basically, and eventually small leaf types that are used to make oolongs and green teas came about in the last several centuries and continue to do so uh, right up to recent years here in Taiwan. Um, so there's just something about the flavor profile, the main thing, I think the note that reminds me of the Fosho is a mineral note, uh, very earthy, combined with a, a very pronounced sweet note, almost confection, which is just as an interesting combination in general. In addition to that, there's fruitiness, dried fruit, um, like, uh, dried apricot, something a little bit like a stone fruit dried, maybe uh, prunes, not super sticky sweet like that, but just that kind of cured fruit flavor. Um, also, I get uh, sometimes uh, roasted yams, butternut squash, that kind of sweet winter vegetable roasted uh, because it has this heavily roasted character underlying all the notes. Our friend uh, continues to learn how to work with these leaves. He's had to do the research, you know, on his own, using his generations of Dongding Oolong tea making experience uh, right through his decades of experience. But uh, these leaves are different and they act differently and they're, they're basically stubborn. They take a lot to get them to the level of oxidation that he is uh, going for and roasting as well. Um, so he's basically just continued to increase the time intervals of withering and uh, tumbling and then of roasting. He roasted it at a, a steady low temperature for almost t about twice as long as the previous batch that we shared last year. I remember, I, uh, I remember saying that he roasted that batch for over 40 hours and this time he told us he roasted it for over 80 hours. That's like an anomaly. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody else say that. Yeah, just a combination of mellow, sweet, a little bit of smoky, but the roast isn't even pronounced anymore. It's really just kind of melded into this oolong character. Uh, it has a slight uh, astringent pop at the end and uh, in the finish. But the texture is still smooth enough. The water is nice and thick. Uh, it's a traditional oolong in our experience and uh, the more we drink oolong, that's what we like the most. The traditional Dongding Oolong that we offer now that is unroasted can kind of go side by side with this because of that level of oxidation and that original flavor, so to speak, that combination of sweet uh, notes with just a little bit of bitter and astringent that makes you just want to keep going back to it. You just never get tired of this uh, character of tea. So there we have it, a uh, uh, Tia Guanyin cultivar made in the traditional Dongding Oolong tea fashion, uh, oxidized even more than normal, roasted definitely more than normal, and then allowed to sit for uh, oh, maybe eight months now after the final roasting was done. We think it's quite special and uh, we're pretty confident that you're going to like it. Thanks for being with us and we'll see you next month.